What's going on guys, Ryan with Jet Patrol back with another video today. We're gonna cover everything you need to have as a 1-6 scale collector. Let's do it. That's right guys, we're back with another video today. We are covering what I am calling the 1-6 scale toolkit. And this is items that you want to have if you are in 1-6 scale collecting, which will help you out with posing, getting awesome poses, poses that won't stand up quite right and you need something to fix that. Uh, or it could be repairs and things you need to customize in your collection, like those stupid magnets that just don't seem to want to stick onto leather one of those things and maybe something else that will help you protect your pleather materials uh, in the future as well so let's go ahead and get started guys I've got a whole pile of stuff here on the table first up on the list is gonna be Ziploc bags that's right guys Ziploc bags you know I've talked about them for weeks and months and probably years and I have on the other side of this wall I have a carryover storage room of boxes and it's stacked from floor to ceiling multiple walls of six scale boxes and there was a time when if i wanted to repose a figure i would have to go in there figure out what the hell box it was in because they had shipper boxes on it figure out which box it is and what pile and what wall it was on to pull that out get the accessories out repose it and put the accessories back up and if you've got like less than 10 figures that might not be a problem However, if you've got more than 10, I'm just an arbitrary number. If you've got a lot and you find yourself having to deal with that, um, this would probably save you a little trouble. Now, I'm going to say that this right here is going to be for accessories. All right. These are going to be for accessories. In fact, no joke. I have, it, uh, I have it right here. This is my tote of accessories. And I have them in Ziploc bags. All right. I have them in Ziploc bags. Uh, and I have them labeled. Let's see here. I got like tape on them. There's Scout Trooper, the Sideshow Scout Trooper, and I have a label. Now, this actually is a pretty good method of keeping things. You don't have to worry about stuff getting banged up, scratched up, and you don't have them in one place. That way you don't have to go reach for a box, bring it out, and then repose figures and put boxes back up. Complete number. And you might even store your boxes in another location. I know some people do. So this is a pretty good way to do that. However, over time, I have found there, this kind of gets in the way. You can imagine if I'm looking for a Shore Trooper pistol hand or whatever then I've got to dig through here and figure out what is going on so that led me to a purchase that I actually made and actually arrived today I was waiting on it for this video and because uh, once you get to a large amount of figures this even this becomes too much this is this is too much for me this is like this is crazy uh, if you've got a, a dozen or so figures this is a good way to do it good way to start inexpensive you don't worry about it however when you get to 100, 200, you know, large amount of figures, uh, that becomes a nightmare. So I actually went on Amazon. I was looking for something to keep accessories in, and I found this piece, and it just got delivered today, so I want to talk about it as part of this particular video. So here it is. This is a hobby craft organizer. All right, I bought this on Amazon. It was 40 bucks. I'll put links for pretty much everything I can think of uh, down below for you guys. Uh, most of the stuff I got on Amazon or Walmart or whatever. Um, but I picked this up. Now, I was pretty excited about this. This holds 64 different compartments. And the idea I had for this was I was going to take this and I've got in here, I've got accessories. Like this is Jenner. So I've got a little scarf. I've got jacket. I've got hands. I got all kinds of little, you know, stuff like that. But the problem I ran into as I was kind of figuring this out with this particular unit, okay, this particular one, is when I had, where was it? I had it right here in front. If I wanted to put Kylo Ren's saber, it's too flipping long for the for the container. It won't it won't work. Like it won't. It's too it's too long. So that was a problem. Uh, the other problem I ran into was uh, with the Clone Trooper Deluxe that I have. He's got too many accessories for these little bins. Therefore, he'd take up two bins, and I don't really like that. So this particular one, uh, I'm gonna be, if I put this back in here, I'm actually gonna be uh, returning this particular one. Uh, the, and the problem being, it's not deep It's not deep enough. So I'm gonna be looking for that. Uh, I will put a link for this down below if you think this might work for you. If you've got a bunch of Marvel Legends, this would be perfect for. Uh, if you got smaller figures, and, and all, all you have are figures with a few sets of hands, not a problem. Uh, but I found that this one right here, I've ran into some issues with. 
personally. So I'm gonna end up returning this one and buying something else. If you have a suggestion, link me down below. But that's what we got going on. Ah. The main point is get the accessories out of storage in a readily accessible place so you can pose your figures, enjoy your figures, and that way it's not a pain in the butt every time you wanna change something. So there you go, Ziploc bags, uh, good. Sharpies, also Sharpie. Why? If you're using these, you need to label them. Simple as that, Sharpie. Moving on, you always need some type of glue, always. Now I've got a particular figure that we're actually gonna fix right here. Let's get to it. All right, we know what this is, guys. This is the Deluxe Beskar Mando from Hot Toy Six Scale Figure. And on the back, we have this little strap right here where this, bla this uh, blaster rifle goes in here. And it's got these tiny little magnets that are stuck on this pleather. And right out of the box, in fact, I showed this when I did the unboxing video, the two magnets, uh, one is supposed to be stuck to this side of the pleather and one's supposed to be stuck to this side but the glue sucks and it came off so we're actually going to have to uh, repair that real quick so what i got guys is i just got some gorilla glue this is micro precise gel and it should work for whatever we need and it's a small applicator you can use uh, any type of uh, super glue uh, fabric stuff that you like this i picked up because i've used it in the past and uh, it's got these tiny little application tips, so I figured that would be helpful for this particular application. All right, we got it open up. There we go. We're going to go ahead and get the, uh, we're gonna get this blaster rifle out of the way first. You're out of here safe. We're gonna get the cape out of the way. There we go. Now, one of the things I found with Iron Man figures, the magnets come loose on those as well, the armor pieces that come off. Uh, another reason you might want this, you wanna make sure you glue it with the collect, uh, correct, the correct polarity uh, going the correct way. So this is supposed to connect like, like uh, it's supposed to just fold over. So I know that this is actually the back, this particular magnet, that's the back that I want to attach to there. So you don't want to glue it, especially with Gorilla Super Glue, uh, the wrong way, because that would really suck. All right, so we're gonna put a little dab of glue right here. Not gonna need much at all, right there. Magnetic, so we want to bend this over. there we go now this won't take very long at all to, to uh, set once it does that magnet will be there and we won't have to worry about it sticking or uh, coming loose any longer so there we go all right from time to time you're going to find a hand when you pull the hand off the figure the peg is actually stuck in there and this is a super easy thing to fix it's not a big deal um, but there's a tool that you might want to make your life a little easier. One of them being, for multiple reasons, a linesman tool. So this right here is just pliers, wire cutters on one section here, and a, a flat nose right there. This is super easy. I use this, this is probably my most often used tool in the whole studio because of this reason right here. So literally we'll take this with a little bit of force, just enough to get it on there, and done that's it and i literally will take this and i'll to make your life easier on those uh hands and if let's say i'm switching this back out i will leave it here peg it back in there give it a little twist done very easy to do linesman tool very great for uh that particular reason and also since it's got a little wire cutter here it's uh good for other uses in the house too another tool you might want to use some needle nose pliers these are just some i had laying around the garage you might have some that are better or cleaner or newer but there you go. This is great for just those little small jobs. Just like you could use this for pulling out those pegs as well. Uh, I find the other ones are just a little easier to use. Uh, you can also use these for getting little odds and ends. Uh, for example, Boba Fett's jetpack. This might be a good tool to use for that. Uh, or that uh, Nebula with her uh, gun holster that did not want to go in. This actually uh, would have been a good tool for that as well. So you might want one of these around to make your life a little easier. If you are an Iron Man collector, a die cast figure collector, you know all those flipping battery compartments suck. They suck. All right. And the little plastic screwdriver give, they give you in the box, that's garbage. It's terrible. Go, go, go out to Lowe's, go to Home Depot, go to Amazon, wherever else, and get yourself a precision screwdriver. I, this one right here might have been like $4. It's got a uh, Phillips. We got a flathead. Literally just flips in here. It's got a rotating tip on the uh, end there, and you can do this like this. And this will make your life so much easier when you're switching out battery compartments on those diecast figures, or even um, uh, battery compartments on uh, diorama pieces that Hot Toys uh, will give us. This right here is my second most often used tool. Definitely invest in one of these, you will need it. 
All right, so you're wondering yourself, what the hell is this? And honestly, I don't know, I'm not really endorsing this particular brand, but this is something I got from Amazon. Uh, sometimes, and a lot of these new collectors, and even the veteran collectors, sometimes you will get a peg broken off in a hand and you need something like this. Now I got this tip from my buddy Terry Smith who actually made a perfect video on how to repair and get pe uh, pegs that are stuck in hands out and he recommended this, so this is what I picked up. So I will put a link to his video, uh, that way you guys can go check that out. But essentially what this is, is a little mini hand drill. Simple enough, your bit goes in there, you tighten it there with the hand, and it's got a spinny thing at the top, and you can do this. Now, again, he goes in way in depth with this, but I know I've seen so many comments lately of uh, people in the group, in the Facebook group, and new collectors who are breaking off pegs. Guys, be careful with those things, they are, they are fragile, but it's not impossible. Terry just laid it out really well, and I don't think I could really do a better job than he did. So go check out his video. One of these, I want to say I paid $11 or $12 for this on Amazon. All right, there we go, guys. Next up on the list, you guys have seen me use these so many times with posing capes and wires and all kinds of fun stuff. This right here, paper clips. Recycled. Paper clips got here, guys. I, I mean, you're talking $2, paper clips. Nothing super fancy, guys. I literally use these all the time in posing. You guys have seen me make videos of these guys. I literally will just take one of these, I'll bend it down, I'll stick it in a boot, a belt, whatever else, and then you can take this wire and you can bend it to wherever length you you want and bend it however you want. The paper clips are great, they're cheap, everybody can get access to them, they're easy, and if you mess it up, you can buy more paper clips. It's like they come in packs of like 100 or 200 or whatever, there's 100 in this box. Um, but for just a few bucks, you can have your own custom wired cape. Now, if you want something that will be a little bit, let's say this paper clip's not long enough, right? You want something to get a little longer, a Batman cape, something like that, then you may want to step it up to something like this. This is artistic wire. You will find this at Hobby Lobby. This right here is 18 gauge wire. I think I paid $3 for this. Uh, yeah, three yards, uh, $3 is four yards of it. Uh, this is, uh, like I said, 18 gauge. This is plenty fine. This is going to be a little bit more sturdy than, um, or a little bit more pliable still sturdy a little bit more pliable and easy to maneuver than uh, a paper clip as you can see it's very easy to maneuver you can use these for capes as well i'll definitely be uh, doing some uh, posing with uh, different capes and stuff in the future because uh spoiler i bought a dc figure and i need to pose the cape but if you got your uh, mandalorian uh, he's got that cloak you got a vader uh, you've got a luke whatever you want to do with that this is a great little tool for you guys to use for three bucks you can wire it up you can have as much length as you need and you can uh, pose up those capes very nicely next up on the list guys we've got binder clips yeah these little yeah, everybody's sitting around the office and you got these or you got them for school work or whatever uh binder clips now i will use these this is a brand new box i will use these uh for capes as well or cloaks or clothing or jackets or stuff like that and i'm totally gonna rip that open um and i get the smaller ones i don't think you need the like the super big ones um but these little binder clips are great for uh if you've got a figure that's got too much material too much fabric uh for posing up you can literally take this bunch it up clip it up and you're good to go these are actually pretty nice uh, i actually use this on kylo ren he's got that really thick thick uh fabric from uh, the force awakens figure i've used it with that to bunch that up in the back uh just a really cool little trick and pretty much anybody's got one uh laying around the house at some point be careful uh you do not want to have this on like you wouldn't want to use this on like a, a spider-man figure something with that pleathery type material because it will dent that so you want to be careful and be mindful of that if you use this just watch it and you might not want to leave it for a very long time depending on the material but that kylo figure some pretty thick material on that thing so there you go binder clips speaking of kylo guys i've got them right here on the turntable which i have several of and i know i get asked this all the time what kind of lazy susan do you have what kind of turntable do you have this one i actually i will link down below the other one i have the giant one is actually from a furniture store i have no idea it's freaking huge and i use it a lot but this one I will link down below um, so help you guys out because I know a lot of people are looking for one. Uh, it's pretty good for uh, single figures or two figures. Um, but Kylo, like I said earlier, has uh, this uh, this fabric that's super thick. Uh, so some things I've done with this that you need. Uh, one, 
double-sided tape. I use double-sided tape all the time. It's crazy how much I end up having to use this for, for molding of fabrics and sticking fabrics together and that kind of stuff to get the flow the way I want. This right here, I use all the time. But there's another trick I don't think I've ever told anybody. Uh, and I actually have it right here. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Um, I actually have magnets. So these are little tiny, tiny, tiny little magnets you guys can see right here. There's, like this is probably 200 of them. They're, you can bend them off. They literally are, they're tiny. Uh, so I have piles of these little magnets and the reason I have these magnets is for keeping fabric together. So I'm actually, the uh, best way I can show you this, um, let's see if I can't do this right for you guys. Uh, but right here I have uh, Kylo's material and it's he's got so much material and i actually tried double side tape to get this material to stick together the way i wanted it to but the double side tape wasn't really quite strong enough for what i was trying to do so underneath if we go under here you'll actually be able to see let's see if i can get under here you'll actually be able to see magnets so i have magnets uh, on one side of the fabric and the other side of the fabric and it keeps it together much stronger than double-sided tape. Double-sided tape over time will break down, wear out, whatever, just gets loose, depending on your, you know, if you're moving it a lot. Um, but magnets, you don't have to worry about that. And uh, I think these magnets right here might have cost for all of these little guys, every one of those little ones is an individual magnet, um, might have cost like seven bucks or eight bucks. I don't know. I'll link that down below as well. Um, but when you have material like this and you want it to stick together and the tape's not really doing the job for you uh, and you can't see it, right? There's the tape that didn't want to work, so I need to pull that tape off. Um, but magnets, pretty easy, right? I have tape all over this figure, no joke. Um, it's, it's really crazy. So I have it taped literally to the boot. You can see it right there. I've got tape to the boot because I wanted to stick there. I use double-sided tape all the time and especially with figures like this with all this fabric material i find it works out pretty good uh, in addition to tape using some magnets next up blue tack there's always a figure that does not want to stand up the balance isn't right if you look at the darth vader with the bottom of the feet that is super super slick it is it is not the easiest thing so sometimes you need some tack to actually get it to stand up guys this right here Probably uh, one of the coolest things. This is actually a brand new pack because uh, I bought a bunch of brand new stuff for this video. Uh, this right here, you can use, mold it, do whatever you want to do, and it will help you with your figures that don't want to stand up. Put a little bit of this uh, on underside of a foot that's uh, not really balancing all that great. Stick it to a material and you're good to go. Your figure will most likely do a better job of standing up. Super easy, three bucks, solve you a lot of headaches. You need this in your kit some round wire. This is those fence wire, that's all this is. This is stuff people use to mend fences, nothing super crazy about it. Might have been like 15 or 20 bucks at Lowe's. I've had this for a year now, I've had a pile of it. And what I do with this guys is I use it for photography. And I use it when figures don't want to uh, pose in the way I want them to. And I don't want to use those giant crotch grabbers or dynamic stands with uh, like Iron Man figures or something like that. And I want to go take my photography outside then I use these, I stick them in the ground, and I, in fact, I'll put some examples on the uh, on the screen for you guys, uh, some examples where I've used this stuff. Uh, but I've used this stuff so often with photography because it's easy to cut out on Photoshop, it's really easy, it's easy to hide, it's very bendable, and obviously I need my linesman pliers to uh, cut it and make it work. But you can make uh, flight stands out of this for uh, other than six scale figures. You can make for Marvel Legends, Black Series figures, whatever. You can make flight stands out of this stuff. Uh, I got this tip from Greg Cook. So shout out to Greg for that tip. Uh, but I've actually been using this for all kinds of different things. And this is a little bonus for you. So if you're not doing photography, you may not need this. Last but not least, the one thing you need is fishing line. You can get this super cheap. It doesn't matter what kind, it doesn't matter what color, it doesn't matter whatever. Fishing line. I've used this so many times, guys. I currently have a Spider-Man figure hanging from my ceiling right now in a Spider-Man pose on fishing line. And it's been there for about a month at least. And he's just hanging there, hanging out with this with a 3M uh, strip tape at the top, holding a 3M hook uh, on the ceiling. This right here. Now, a couple reasons for this. One, Spider-Man figures, uh, I'm not a big fan of the little webbing stuff those figures come come with uh, because if you want to actually attach it to something, they're not going to work. And uh, I know some people use like um, uh, 
saran wrap and they'll wire and round that up and uh, make a line out of that. I find that this works a little better. I like the way this looks uh, and it's easy and it's cheap. You can you don't have to worry about it. So another reason for this, if you uh, recommend or if you <clears throat> If you remember the video I did on the uh, Hot Toys Ronin, Hawkeye Deluxe slash Ronin, you guys will know that that zipper was a complete nightmare. People were breaking zippers off. People were just pulling their hair out with that. And the simplest trick right here, because those little zippers are so small, and it might be on any figure, but those zippers are so small, you can take a thread of fishing line, feed it through that zipper hole, and then now, make a little loop and pull from this, not from that little buckle because you'll break it. This I use all the time if you're taking off, putting on zippers or whatever you're gonna do for different figures that need it. That Ronin figure, I probably would have broke if I did not use this. So get you some fishing line, you never know when you're gonna need it. <clears throat> That's gonna <clears throat> That's gonna wrap up this episode, guys. I hope you found this stuff helpful for you. If you have something that I missed that I did not put in the toolkit, let me know in the comment section down below and we will add it in a future edition. But we got a lot of stuff here. This is not very expensive. Uh, I mean, we've probably got $30 or so, depending on how much you spend on tools and probably some of these tools you probably already have in the house. So it's not gonna cost you a lot of money. And there was one more thing I forgot. I just saw it right here on the table. I don't know how I missed it. It's like the largest item on the table. Right there. <laughs> For those pleather materials that break down and crack and fray over time, uh, some three or three wipes guys right here. For example, um, Hot Toys Anakin, Dark Side Anakin, Light Side Anakin, pretty much any Jedi that's got that pleather-like material, Bucky from the Winter Soldier, uh, that kind of stuff. I don't know how I forgot about this, but I, I did sitting right here on the table. Uh, depending on your climate, your humidity, your temperatures, all that kind of stuff going on in your collection room, you may need to use this. You may need to do this, guys, uh, depending on that figure. But these right here, probably nine, 10 bucks, something like, I'll link it down below. If they're not, you can get them on Amazon. I, think, I almost forgot about that. Yeah, anyways, now that we're finally done. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If I did forget something, let me know down below. I almost forgot that. That would have been crazy. Um, but yeah, you guys have been super helpful with me. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. We've got helpful content here. We don't only do unboxings and reviews. I'm here to help you guys out with your collection, whether it be in posing, whether it be in repairs, whether it be in just tips and tricks and lightings and displays and all kinds of stuff like that. We're here to talk about all things collecting right here. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you haven't already, Join the Facebook group. What the heck are you waiting on? Link for that down below. And guys, let me know what your thoughts on this video. Let me know if it feels helpful for you. As always, click what you like. See you next time.